Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are, remember, you have greatness inside of you. Welcome back to another Ab Daily News with your hockey coach, your coach, Frenchy. Today, episode number 264. What do you have a new coach today? First of all, a big W for the Montreal Canadiens and San Jose. Secondly, can use a quiet trade deadline so far. And thirdly, I want to talk about David Saval, the new big brother for the Montreal Canadiens. But before we start, we invite you, please don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Hockey Nation Live Show. And please leave me a comment about this episode and sharing this on your social media. And let's dive in and talk about my first subject of the day. My first subject of the day, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens won yesterday by the score of 3-1 over the San Jose Sharks. And with that W, mm, they are now 25 or 25th in the standing in NHL. Forget better. That's it. That's all. But it is great for the Montreal Canadian. I'm going to give you the reason behind. First of all, the Montreal Canadian scored three goals during the third period to come back and get that W. Caden Cooley returned after two months or eight weeks uh, on the ice with the Montreal, and he was the one score a tie the game 1-1 against the San Jose Sharks. The second goal of the game came to Jesse Allenon. What a great pass from Rem Lake and finally an empty net by Christian Devorak. It was the first game of Denis Kurianov play a solid game with six shots on the net over 17 minutes for the Montreal Canadiens. We recognize his speed, his shot, his drive to the net, uh, we cannot complain. Martin Siri was really happy about his performance yesterday. But again, the arrow of the evening, in my eyes, is Jake Allen uh, stopped 38 of the 39 shot he faced yesterday. And, of course, uh, he won four of the last five games he played for the Montreal Canadiens between the pipes. Uh, again, Montreal Canadiens complete the month of February. They finished with a record of 6-3-0. Since January 6, 2023, the winning percentage guy is 548 compared to 423 prior to that. So just give you an idea how Montreal are looking great uh, since the beginning of 2023. With that W, guys, uh, uh, Martin St. Louis smiling, a uh, bench uh, completely transformed with happiness uh, after the three goal uh, for the Montreal Canadian. But one thing you have to remember, guys, we talked about this for the last couple of days. Uh, the culture is growing and growing a growing. This is a really important big news for the Montreal Canadiens. At the same time, the development does the same thing. They continue to improve all the players for the Montreal Canadiens. Remember what Martin said we said about the culture. Work ethic is the bar minimum. You have to work collectively. You have to work smart. This is happening with Montreal yesterday, guys. Whatever the play pop up in the lineup. Yesterday was Korean off. Cooley came back in the lineup. What happening? Another great performance of Montreal as a team with their team effort. First of all, the first 40 minutes of the game, guys, Montreal did not look bad. They could not finish and took advantage or opportunity they got. But at the third period, they show up and that's the reason they won but the score a 3-1. Here, my last Thinking about the Montreal Canadiens. First of all, the head coach is chief happiness officer. Martin St. Louis remind early in the day. The Canadians have just been focused on themselves deeply immersed and their own process a place to be growing. He always remind everybody we don't compare ourselves with other teams in NHL. They're really focusing on themselves. They want to build their own culture their own intensity, and that's what Martin St. Louis does, and that's the reason why Montreal looking better since the beginning of 2023. With that W, guys, I mentioned about the happiness. The fun is back with the Montreal Canadian. Hear what a statement he said after the game, Martin St. Louis. I think they're having a lot of fun, St. Louis. You guys walk in the aisles, you can feel it. You hear the music playing and stuff. I don't know if from the stand, you are able to catch some clips of the bench, but guys are having fun on the bench. They are engaged. They are playing hard for one another, and by no means are we perfect out there. We make mistakes. Guys are tapping each other on the pads. A next line up is trying to pick the team up or keep doing what we are doing. 
It's a really good vibe. That's what you want, and that's what we are trying to build. That's exactly what I'm talking about, guys. The culture, the brand, the, the intensification of what Montreal wants to become. And that's the fun is back, and that's you can see whatever the players get out, come in. It's no matter. The logo, the team is more important, and they play smart, they play great. And the work it's sick is there. So that's happening yesterday again in Montreal Canadiens versus the St. Jose Sharks. I would like to hear from you uh, comments uh, about this first subject. I would like to hear more about, are you disappointed Montreal is not going to select the top five? At least they win the NHL draft lottery. So this concludes, guys, my first subject. Let's move on for my second subject of the day. My second subject, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens have a very quiet week so far. Can you try, guys? They try to make something happening, but it's not easy. Why? Here's the keys. First of all, Ken Hughes, Libet is in tie up because of injury. Sean Manian and Joanne Manson, they are the two best assets Montreal can trade. Secondly, they are more team on the sailor side. I'm talking about the Washington, talking about the Nashville Predator. That's pushed Montreal have the difficult time to trade because with the both team, they are more players available to make a trade. You can see the last couple of days that Nashville trade at home. Jenna, Washington, Olav. And that's the difficulties for Ken Hughes at this moment. Still have a couple more days in front of him, but do not expect a lot big splash for the Montreal like last year. And he doesn't want to sell a lower cost. He don't want to give Edmondson for the fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. I believe Ken Hughes have to wait until the summer to make something happening bigger for the Montreal Canadiens. So don't be discouraged. Don't be frustrated. Don't blame Ken Hughes. Just let it go and see what's happening during the summer. Be patient with Ken Hughes. Then what is next for the Montreal Canadiens is the evaluation players until the end of the season. Prepare the NHL draft by scouting players around the world. Finally, consider the development the players for the Montreal Canadiens until the end of the season. Maybe at the end of the day, possible Montreal Canadiens could win the NHL draft lottery. It would be the best thing could happen to them. But remember, guys, the schedule for the rest of the season is the number one for any other team. They are really difficult for the last 22 games for the Montreal Canadiens. This concludes, guys, my second subject of the day. I would like to hear from you. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the Ken Hughes is quiet week so far. Let's move on, guys, for the last subject of the day. My last subject of the day, guys, about David Savard, the big brother for the Montreal Canadiens. First of all, guys, Jake Allen said after the game yesterday, I think it's time to recognize what David Savard bring for the Montreal Canadiens since the beginning of the season. Without him, he said, Montreal Canadiens did not have the same season they have so far since the beginning of the year. Savard, guys, play an amazing, great role model for the Montreal Canadiens for the rookies. He took in charge and he bring all of them under him. Not only is their teammate, but he does amazingly great things for the rookies. He keep the group together. He talked to them on the local room, on the bench, on the eyes. Honestly, he become the biggest leader inside the locker room now for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, CV missed 13 games since the beginning of the season. But remember, guys, whatever he missed 30 games is still high is the most for the Montreal Canadiens from any defenseman. He played the most minute on PK and he played the most minute on five versus five. And the thing, guys, he's not the first pairing defenseman most of the team in, in NHL. But he still prove. His quality, his utility for the Montreal Canadiens since the beginning of the season. Now, some of guys, maybe many of you think he's really slow. Many of you think his speed is not there anymore. But here, pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. Attention how you judge the speed of any player in any shot. It's not only about the fattest on the ice. Sometimes you have to remember, Savar is very really smart. He unspeed the play a lot. He skate to the right direction all the time. He's pushing himself properly face to the opening players and face to the puck. And finally, his awareness on the ice is so good. He know where his teammates are on the ice on every all the time. And he knows exactly what the opening player are on the ice. For me, when I was coaching, I would tell to my players, take a picture. 
every two seconds. Take a picture, recognize where they are, your teammate, and recognize where they are, the opening player. And Sabal apply this properly with a Montreal Canadian. At the end of the day, guys, uh, Sabal is an excellent coach for the Montreal Canadian. He teaches a player, like I said, inside the locker room, on the ice and on the bench. He really tried to minimize all the errors the rookie does do on the ice. He's really smart to recognize everybody's going to make mistakes, but he doesn't want them to panic, but to prepare them for the next shift. I believe now the way David Savard played with the Montreal Canadiens, that pushed now the Montreal Canadiens to trade at some point Jordan Edmondson, maybe at the, before the end of the trade deadline or maybe during the summer. And finally, David Savard guy, he go nowhere. I really believe after he's going to complete his career in NHL, could become a really a good assistant coach in NHL, could join the staff on Montreal at some point. So this concludes, guys, my third subject. But I would like to hear from you. What do you think about David Savals in the beginning of the season with the Montreal Canadiens? Here we go, guys. This concludes my episode 264 for the Montreal Canadiens. But before we leave, we invite you, please, don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Hockey Nation Live Show, and leave me a comment about this episode. And, of course, we want to remind you, you have greatness inside of you, and we wish you an amazing, blessing day, everybody.